What's up? My name's Eric, and I'm going to show you on today's video this new bass that I've got. I've had it for a little while here, and this is my 2018-ish Dingwall NG2 5-string in this beautiful Lambo orange color. And if you guys remember, I had a Dingwall D-Rock. Keyword is had because I sold it and got this. And I'm going to tell you why I did that, even though in a few videos, many videos ago, I said I was probably never going to get rid of the bass. But here we are. So... Without further ado, let's hear how this thing sounds in a mix first. All right, so there you had the Dingwall NG2 five-string Adam Nolly get good signature bass in a full demo mix. Uh, real fast, let's get some specs out of the way here. We got an alder body, we have a maple neck and fingerboard here. We got these 24 frets here on these banjo-sized frets, really tiny, makes for playing really nice and real easy, which is pretty cool. Uh, hip shot hardware pretty well all throughout here. We have the two pickups here from Dingwall. This is the older model where they were actually still using the soap bar designs, which I personally prefer over the new ones because in case maybe something, maybe let's say a pickup fails down the road, which I doubt it will, I can just go and get any sort of soap bar size pickup and just put it back in. Unlike the new ones, it might be a little harder just to find um, a replacement pickup from that. I'm not sure if Dingwall carries them in stock on their website or anything. And the big thing that separates this bass from many others, we have the dark glass preamp, which is, as we all know, a recipe and a very tried and true recipe for great metal tones. Throughout most of this demo, you're going to hear all the way back, we're going to have the bridge pickup, the second position, we're going to have the neck or the middle pickup here, third position is going to be both of these pickups in series, and the fourth is going to be both of these in parallel.
now with this bass, this isn't just limited to the super heavy metal music that this was kind of designed in mind for, especially with the dark glass preamp. Um, you're also going to hear throughout this demo all of the tone controls of the dark glass preamp. They're all in just halfway. If you crank them up all the way, you're going to get a ton of distortion, and I felt that that might not be the best representation of showing this whole bass in a full context. I mean, there's other channels that do it, and even for the demo, the full demo mix that you heard, like all the tone controls are just maxed out because that's what I was going for. But for a general sound here, I'm thinking halfway is probably good to give you guys an idea. And honestly, this does more than just metal really well, as I said, you know, especially with tapping, finger style, and other sorts of genres like that, even a little bit of slapping and popping. This does it very well, and this active preamp system here really helps these notes pop through and honestly shine and not fall apart in the mix. Alright, so now the whole point of this is why did I sell my D-Rock and buy this? In a few, uh, many videos ago, I had a, a little demo video similar to this about the D-Rock saying like, it's a perfect bass, you know, like it does the whole ding wall thing even without an active preamp and everything. And here we are where I pretty well sold it and got this. So I initially bought the D-Rock because I loved the shape and, you know, plugged it in. It sounded amazing, did the whole uh, low tune thing really well and everything like that. Then. Throwing it in an actual band mix, even with all the amount of like EQing and flexibility that it has, it seemed like it was still having a hard time really keeping up and cutting through with the context that I was using it in the room and on stage. If that bass had an active preamp, I probably would have kept it. You know, you could tweak all day out here on the stu in the studio, you know, with different compressors, filters, EQs, and whatever like that. And it's going to sound different coming out of monitors rather than an actual 410 or an 810. But at the end of the day, like, I just needed something that was right in the ballpark, right from the day one, and ready to go no matter what. So I actually ended up getting this out in Calgary and had to use it the next day at a festival that I was playing because my main bass decided to not work for some reason. So threw this in and it was honestly perfect. It sounded better than my Fender Jaguar, to be totally honest. Cut through and it just had that modern metal sound that was just, that's just so iconic today. You know, not to, you know, be lame and say, well, it's a dark glass and a ding wall, right? Like, How original. recipe for a good tone, but, at the end of the day, if it works, it works, and if it sounds amazing, well, you know, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? With all that being said, thanks for watching this video. This is kind of an overview of my new bass and kind of why I bought this one and got rid of my old one, even though they're from this exact same brand. They're, they're trying to do the exact same thing within the ballpark of each other. Um, yeah, if you like this video, drop a thumbs up. Leave a comment below if you got another bass that's on par with this or if you're another Dingwall fan as well. Or, yeah, and subscribe, hit the bell. Whatever YouTube is wanting to push for the algorithm these days, who knows? It's all a game, right? Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.